Word of God Online, December 30th, 2008, by faith, Hebrews 11. Scripture of the day, Ephesians 2.8. Because of his kindness, you have been saved through trusting Christ. And even trusting is not of yourselves. It too is a gift from God. Hebrews 11. What is faith? It is the confidence assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. Men of God in days of old were famous for their faith. By faith, by believing God, we know that the world and the stars, in fact all things, were made at God's command, and that they were all made from things that can't be seen. It was by faith that Abel obeyed God and brought an offering that pleased God more than Cain's offering did. God accepted Abel and proved it by accepting his gift, and th though Abel is long dead, we can still learn lessons from him about trusting God. Enoch trusted God too, and that is the way God took him away to heaven without dying. Suddenly he was gone because God took him. Before this happened, God had said how pleased he was with Enoch. You can never please God without faith, without depending on him. Anyone who wants to come to God must believe that there is a God and that he rewards those who sincerely look for him. Noah was another who trusted God. When he'd heard God's warning about the future, Noah believed him even though there was no signs of a flood, and wasting no time he built the ark and saved his family. Noah's belief in God was in direct contrast to the sin and disbelief of the rest of the world, which refused to obey. And because of his faith, he became one of those who God had ex has accepted. Abraham trusted God, and when God told him to leave home and go far away to another land which he promised to give him, Abraham obeyed. Away he went, not even knowing where he was going. And even when he reached God's promised land, he lived in tents like a mere visitor, as did Isaac and Jacob, to whom God gave the same promise. Abraham did this because he was confidently awaiting God for God to bring him to that strong heavenly city whose designer and builder is God. Sarah too had faith and because of this she was able to become a mother in spite of her old age for she realized that God who had her had her his promise would certainly do what he said and so a whole nation came from Abraham who was to who was to too old to have even one child a nation with so many millions of people that, like the stars of the sky and the sand on the ocean shores, there's no way to count them. These men of faith I have mentioned died without ever receiving all that God had promised them. But they saw all awaiting them on ahead and were glad, for they agreed that this earth was not their real home, but that they were just strangers visiting down here. And quite obviously when they talked like that, they were looking forward to their real home in heaven. If they had wanted to, they could have gone back to the things of this world, but they didn't want to. They were living for heaven, and now God is not ashamed to call them their God, for he has made heavenly city for them. While God was testing him, Abraham still trusted in God and his promises, and so he offered up his son Isaac and was ready to slay him on the altar of sacrifice. Yes, to slay even Isaac, through which God had promised to give Abraham a whole nation of descendants. He believed that if Isaac died, God would bring him back to life again, and that is just what happened, for as far as Abraham was concerned, Isaac was doomed to death, but he came back alive again. It was by faith that Isaac knew God would give future blessings to his two sons, Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's two sons as he stood and prayed, leaning on top of his cane. And it was by faith that Joseph, as he neared the end of his life, confidently spoke of God bringing the people of Israel out of Egypt. And he was so sure of it that he made them promise to carry his bones with them when they left. Moses' parents had faith too. When they saw that God had given them an unusual child, they trusted that God would save him from the death the king commanded. And they hid him from the death the king commanded and were not afraid. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be treated as the grandson of the king, but chose to share ill treatment with God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting ple pleasures of sin. He thought that it was better to suffer from the, for the promised Christ than to own all the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking forward to the great reward that God would give him. And it was because he trusted God that he left the land of Egypt and wasn't afraid of the king's anger. Moses kept right on going. It seemed as though he could see God right there with him, and it was because he believed God would save his people 
that he commanded them to kill a lamb as God had told them and to sprinkle the blood of the, on the doorsteps of their homes so that God's terrible angel of death could not touch the oldest child in those homes as he did among the Egyptians. The people of Israel trusted God and went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground but when the Egyptians chasing them tried it they were all drowned. It was faith that brought the walls of Jericho tumbling down after the people of Israel had walked around them seven days as God had commanded them by faith because she believed in God and his power Rahab the harlot did not die with all the others in her city when they refused to obey God for she gave a friendly welcome to their spies well how much more do I need to say it would take a long time to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and all the other prophets these people all trusted God and as a result won battles overthrew kingdoms ruled their people well and received what God had promised them they were kept from harm in a den of lions and in a fiercy furnace some through their faith escaped death by the sword some were made strong again after they had been weak or sick others were given great power in battle they made whole armies turn and run away and some women through faith received their loved ones back again from death but others trusted God and were beaten to death, preferring to die rather than to turn from God and be free, trusting that they would rise to a better life afterwards. Some were laughed at, and their backs cut open with whips, and others were chained in dungeons. Some died by stoning, and, and some by being sawed in two. Others were promised freedom if they would renounce their faith. They were killed with, their, with the sword. Some went about in skins of sheep and goats, wandering over the deserts and mountains, hiding in dens and caves. They were hungry and sick and ill-treated, too good for this world. And these men of faith, though they trusted God and won his approval, none of them received all that God had promised them, for God wanted them to wait and share the even better rewards that were prepared for us. Hebrews 11 Recapping this, we are as humans very much about what we see and hear. All day we are bombarded by things around us, news, sports, advertising, music, work, and so much more in a 24-hour span. Faith does not work on this level. Faith is the certainty of that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. Trusting God means responding not as this world does, but responding in conjunction with prayer and belief according to God's plan and his word. God asks us in the Bible to put him first above all things, and if we do this, then all the blessings he has for us will be bestowed upon us. This little piece of our day, the first, is often filled with rushing to get off the work. So how can you make some adjustments to put him first in your day? As we come upon the new year, and many of us make these lame New Year's Eve revolutions, resolutions like eating less or exercising, which are all good things that we are always seem to break before January has ended, I put it before you to make just one New Year's resolution. Put God first every day for 2009 and give Him a few minutes before any other thoughts or work. Pray to God. Sing to God. Put God to the test and give him what he asks, a tenth of your income, the first tenth of your income to your local church and see what happens. This is my New Year's resolution to put God first. Will you join me? Do you have faith that he will honor this commitment? I do. Join me on this quest for 2009. Let's step up our faith, our belief. I have much to share about what I think 2009 will look like and why this is so important. Visit and sign up for the daily words at the Word of God online.